Hey YouTubers, thanks for uh, coming back. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, helmet stands today and uh, different heights for different helmets and uh, a little bit about making your own stand um, as well and which is what I do most of anymore. Um, custom stands or pre-built stands can be nice and are nice, uh, but they, you know, they have a price um, and it depends on what you want and uh, and how much you're willing to spend uh, but it's also about being able to customize what you need because a lot of the times you know you're you're stuck with whatever somebody's offering as far as the height um, so when it comes to certain things uh, certain different height stands work differently um, when we're talking Star Wars there's specifics because there's going to be um, you know the same or, or I should say there's gonna be specifics for each helmet um, but also to a point of, um, you know, what, what you like better or not. So uh, what we have right now in front of us here, we have a, a variety of stands. Uh, the one on the far left is a uh, acrylic stand that was um, purchased off of a, a pre-made, you know, a, a manufacturer on, uh, you know, on eBay. Um, and obviously intended for Boba Fett because of the um, uh, Mandalorian symbol at the bottom. The entire... Uh, stand was clear but I painted the bottom um, black um, because the, uh, the actual Mandalorian symbol was etched on the surface of the of, of the base so it didn't interfere with it and it just gives a, a nice contrast and a shiny mirror-like quality to it it was pretty cool um, and the surface uh, disc was just straight acrylic and um, which again is okay but if the inside of the helmet is a hard <clears throat> plastic like uh, the EFX helmet that I have and or some other helmets they or the like the or I should say specifically the um, the black series helmet Boba Fett that plastic on plastic tends to slide around a lot so I cut out a, uh, a round strip of uh, uh, a felt cloth with adhesive on the other side the, with the adhesive backing and it makes a nice uh, nice finished looking top well I mean I could have cut the circle a little bit better, but it doesn't matter as being used inside the helmet. But it gives a nice uh, texture uh, to the bottom of it. And I think I may have done that on the bottom. Yeah, I put the felt on the bottom as well so that the uh, they don't tend to slide around on hard to hard surface. It gives a little more friction and plus it just gives a little bit nicer finish look to it. Um, and these other helmets are helmets that I have made and or making so this one here the black one is just um a wood a six inch wood uh disc well it was actually two discs sandwiched together and i'll explain that in a little while uh, about the manufacturing process i'm just going over the stands at the moment and it follows the same suit it's just a, a base with the pole and then a disc at the top similar idea the felt at the top felt at the bottom just made out of wood and painted with a textured black to kind of look just cool but a little bit normal. This was a custom Boba Fett stand that I made out of um, actual PVC uh, uh, tubing and piping and uh, uh, drainage uh, material, you know, devices or pieces from from Lowe's. A nice big thicker. I mean, this thing's kind of heavy. It's it's a little little a uh, little uh, intru intrusive, but um, felt on the top uh there was this piece was a uh um a plastic uh, coupling for tubing that you know f uh, with the outside diameter inside diameter and then this you know fits down on top of this pvc two inch tube then this two inch tube goes into the collar of this base which is actually um you can almost see the design a little bit there it's actually a, a sewer drain that goes down into the floor uh, but upside upside down, and it connects to the piping underneath. But when you turn it around upside down like this, it makes a nice, wonderful wide base with a cool looking um, shape to it. And if you get a good paint job on it, it's kind of cool. Um, I did one like this for my for my uh, EFX Boba Fett because it was the high end Boba Fett helmet that I have, um, and uh, all my other stand, all my other helmets that had stands. I had made these black ones. I was using this acrylic one for the Boba Fett, but it's just a little too short. I just, you know, 
I was disappointed with it, how short it was. So I needed a little bit something, something a little bit higher. So I made that, but I wanted to make something a little bit more grand for my FET. So I made this one, same height though, roughly 13 inches. But again, we'll get to that. Um, then this wood one, I'm making another similar you know, process as the black one. Uh, so I'm not done making it yet. I just actually fabricated it and got it together. Got a uh, different disc up at the top, a little bit thicker, a little bit wider, a four inch disc rather than a three inch like those. Um, one inch dowel, six inch uh, sandwiched wood base. And again, we'll get into the construction a little bit later, but uh, the height and everything is what we're uh, gonna start, the, the reasons for the height differences. Um, so those are the uh, basic stands that I work with or deal with, or heights that I deal with. Uh, not this one, though. this stand over here uh, from top to bottom um, is, what, if I go flat, that's 12 inches total. The bottom of the FET uh, helmet is barely, you know, getting your hand underneath of it if you wanted to see it. You can't even barely see the um, the symbol, so it's not, it's kind of pointless. So we wanted just a little bit. I, I figured a, a good, like, hand width, uh, four inches or something from the bottom of the helmet would be my own personal measurement. So I just kicked that up an inch, and it gave me that. So um, I just... I. You can't really throw this thing out. It it looks nice, and so I keep it if I just want to have something to put the FET helmet down on or something smaller. Um, but the uh, uh, and the Stormtrooper helmets also work better with the 13 inch um, stand. Well, the total stand height from top to bottom being uh, I'm trying to get flat there being roughly 13 inches. It can. It can be 13 inches and some change. Doesn't have to be exact. Uh, and the same thing with the FET helmet. I mean, this one here, uh, 13 and a quarter, but that's just because there's a little bit thicker base than down there. Uh, this one here is going to be for my other Vaders. I'm gonna doll them up and get a little bit more to them. Uh, this one flat at top is 14 and a half. Well, close. Um, because Vader is obviously a little bit bigger and deeper in the inside of the helmet. So, in order to kind of see how that works, uh, I've got my two Vaders up top that I'm going to show off yet again. Uh, one of them, uh, the PCR Vader, has the black 13-inch um, stand that I have here, and then the uh, limited uh, edition Vader is on its own custom stand, which the actual post of the stand is 13 inches, but the disc at the top is a half inch, so that's about a 13 and a half inch height from the base. Um, so let's take a look at them real quick and uh, let me get up there so we can see them. And I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Thanks for waiting. Um, okay, so in front of us we have um, the uh, two EFX Vaders, my PCR Vader on the left and the uh, limited fiberglass edition on the right. Um, actually, I'm going to back up here a bit. So Quite not in focus, or at least it seems. Uh, okay, it looks all right. So the Vader on the left has the 13 inch black stand that I custom made, just because I don't have anything else to put it on yet, but it'll be getting one of the um, taller ones I'm making now. So you can see, I mean, it comes right down on top. I barely have enough room to um, prop it up at an angle or whatever that I want. Um, and then the, uh, uh, the EFX limited one, uh, you can see because it has a 13 inch or in this case, 13 and a half inch with the, the disc on the top, uh, post that comes down and gives us about, well, about an inch and a half of clearance, but from the, from the neck to the base. So, uh, and that looks good to me there. That that's a good enough clearance. It's just coming down low enough. Um, that it doesn't look like it's got this big stick sticking out the bottom of it. So that's the other thing too. Sure, you can make a tall helmet, but you don't want too much of the of, of this of the base sticking out. You know, this kind of looks gaudy, but it can be too short. So that's kind of the, the the way that the Vader helmets would look, and the differences between them. Why well, you need the taller one? So um, 
the so that from now if the the one that I'm making right now is slightly from the bottom to the top is slightly taller than this one, but it won't be that obtrusive. It'll just be you know the, they're going to be a little different anyway because uh, this base that it's on is already putting an inch on top of everything else. So when I get the um, I'm making a second one of those newsstands as well. I don't have one here for display, so I've got two of them because there's going to be two Vaders here. I've got the one I've got here on this side, I've got my uh, limited edition, and then I've got uh, a commission Vader coming from one of our well-known manufacturing groups, and I just want to hold it all in until it gets here. But anybody who knows me probably knows who I'm talking about. Uh, hurry up, guys. I know you're busy, but I want my Vader. I cannot wait to see it. Um, so that's going to go there and, uh, just to give me a good, you know, pyramidal type of quality to it. And, uh, they'll both get the, uh, stand that I make after I custom make them. Um, and, um, that way that'll, they'll have a good solid base and a good height to them. And that'll probably even them out a little bit more, but the EFX one will probably hang a little bit higher because of the bigger base. So that's kind of the uh, drift of how they're going to look. Uh, with each uh, height now when we get down to uh, all these other guys down here they're in these cases because they just don't fit with a stand and I got these cases to have helmets so um, I'm not really making stands for them um, and, unless I really have a reason to put one out uh, for for a uh, open display but the reason that the vaders are getting them is because they're just too big to fit in these cases except for that little monster over there but you know he's going to be getting packed away soon um so the vaders get up top because they're just too big and it just makes it look better to have the big ones up top with their own stands and then everybody else is just kind of sitting in here on their own and that's fine i mean i would prefer to have stands for them i made you know one over there and it's just kind of not going to use um I don't know, I might sell it later if, or uh, later if somebody's looking for a custom Boba Fett stand or two. I just don't need them. I mean, they're, they're sitting in here and they're perfectly uh, at home, not collecting dust, which is the other thing too. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I like having these out, but there's the dust factor. Um, but my little static free uh, uh, um, or a static duster works perfectly on perfectly on these things while scraping them or bumping them um so yeah that's going to be um the little um section on the examples of them so as far as height and necessary height so again for the vaders we're looking at the 14 and a half inch stand from top to bottom and the stormtroopers and fed helmets or anything of that size um, and also uh, my uh, Luke uh, helmet the um, X-Wing pilot helmet works best with this stand as well for so for most helmets I'm gonna say that the 13 inch stand is where you want to go and for all the other bigger helmets Vader and anybody bigger I guess like a, a maybe a TIE pilot helmet uh, or something like that would get the 14 to 15 inch depending on how, how you want to make it um, uh, and you know that's it so I'm gonna go ahead and pause it and just get two of these over here for a little bit of a manufacturing um, round and then we'll finish that up okay thanks for holding for the last couple minutes here so uh, yeah just getting into the tutorial aspect of making these things uh, like I said, when it comes to custom stands, now, now you can see there's a little bit of a crooked angle to that top. I'll fix that. I'll just loosen the, the screw up and put a little shim under there to fix that and get that even. But, um, you know, hey, that's part of the manufacturing process, but it is what it is. Uh, so, you know, I make them this way and uh, they end up that way. And this is how I make them. And again, less than 10 bucks in materials and a little bit of elbow grease uh, and you know if you've got a screwdriver power uh, power or powered screw or power drill with screwdriver ends on it is going to be very helpful um, and for drill bits and so forth it's I mean you can do it by hand but it's it's 
much better if you've got a power drill with uh, with drill bits uh, and a handsaw. You don't really need an electric saw if you have one; it makes it easier. But a nice handsaw, you can buzz these inch dowels out in just seconds. It's not a problem. And of course, um, uh, sandpaper to smooth out the the surfaces before you start painting um, to give them something to go on. Um, so. I'll use the one I'm currently making to kind of go over how I make because I'm making them the exact same way. Just um, this one's kind of in, in process. So I'm going to kind of set you down here if, I, if that'll work. So we're going to start with um, something that'll hopefully stay in focus. The Again, the, depending on the hole height that we want, um, the, uh, the pole in the middle would would be where we start. But knowing how much you're going to be ending up with, you have to kind of consider. So dealing with um, this being, you know, uh, an inch thick disc, almost three quarters of an inch rather, uh, and then we deal with the total accumulated um, base uh, being quarter inch comprised of two eighth inch discs sandwiched together, as you can see. Um, you know, so that gives us the inch total. Um, then we have the space between them. Uh, see if I can get that even. Being, uh, I can't do that without doing this. Hang on one second. So I'm going to bring them over because the camera lens is a weird spot. Weird spot. So 13 and a half uh, for just the, the post or the pole. And then the other inch uh, that the disc and the base provide gives us... Um, well, I'm trying to do this without messing it up, but hang on. Going to be roughly... Yeah, you're going to start getting on my nerves here. Um, okay, 14 and a half. Or 14, yeah, 14 and a half. Rough size. So 13 and a half plus the top end. So 14 and a half total. Um, I wouldn't go any higher than 15. It just... The reason that actually, and this actually would have been higher, but the reason I had to, uh, the reason this one's the way it is, is um, when I put it together earlier, this end of the uh, pole was just slightly uneven. So I actually, to take this off, take a little material out of there just to clean it, straighten it out, and um, put the disc back on, but it went in a little crooked. So um, rather than trying to keep tape material out, I'm just going to. Loosen it, put a little shim in there, tighten it back up with the shim, and it's done. So this would have been closer to 15 inches total when I was done with it. Um, so the way, the, the way, what I do, the reason I'm sandwiching the bottom is, um, uh, to, number one, add more um, uh, support to it, but um, mostly just out of kind of necessity more than uh, a reason to do it that, this way was that uh, I in my local like shop uh, like hobby shop or craft store or uh, even like Home Depot or Lowe's I'm not finding uh, any wood discs um, this size that I need and I would rather them just already be cut out in circles rather than me having to go do all that all the time that's just extra pain in the butt work that I don't want to do uh, so I guess I could not complain about it if I just did the extra work and just made these out of thicker discs to begin with and just cut them out. But which, how much more work am I, am I putting into it, right? So what I end up doing is I get the two discs and I glue them together. And then that's what the tape is for. The tape is basically just holding them in place until the glue settles. And I just, I just have them in there the entire time of, of um, putting this thing together. Then once everything's together and it's all solid... I will then remove the tape and cut around the bottom before I start uh, around the bottom here to get the tape away from the center uh, before I start painting. Um, so then I get uh, the I get these two sandwiched together. 
Um, I had to do the sandwiching routine for this one because I had a three inch disc instead of a four like the other one that I'm working with uh, because you were dealing with smaller helmets and at the time that was the only size I was finding. I was finding either one inch or two inch discs or nothing at all of this thickness. I didn't want a huge, big, um, heavy thing at the end. So I just dealt with a three inch disc and they're okay. Um, but I did the same thing. I basically just sandwiched two thin um, three inch discs together to give them some stability and then just um, used them. Uh, I did the same way, glued them together, taped them in position and just put the whole thing together while they're still taped. Um, so put him back and then uh, get back to this. Uh, you know, I did I did my best to measure out the center. You know, using a uh, my my circle tool um, and uh, on both ends. And I was uh, just uh, you know trying to put it down through the middle, and the drill bit goes slightly. I, try, I was doing my best, but I'm only one person here with one set of hands. Uh, so the when I'm drilling, pre-drilling a hole through the top uh, in the middle, the drill bit kind of went just a little. Uh, so it put this internal slight angle, you know, to the disc. So when I put the screw in, it's pulling the disc off a little bit. So I had to deal with that. That's what I'm going to be working with. And again, if you go back and pull it out and try and re-drill the hole straighter you start making a bigger opening and then your screw that you're using doesn't work and you got to put a bigger screw in and then if you're doing that you start running the risk of splitting something and i just you know all i need to do is just loosen it put a little shim underneath and level it out and be done with it but the reason i'm using this top instead of like the other ones i was using number one i wanted a four inch disc and i finally found something in four inch because i was going to use them for the vader um, and they already had at the, at the, uh, at the craft store, these pre-made wood discs that had this, um, you know, uh, tooling or this, uh, 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 detailing to it with the, uh, the lathing to it with the, under, with the undercut that went around and it looked actually kind of cool. I was like, you know, I don't need just a, even though nobody's going to see it, it just still looked cool. It had this, uh, just nice little flair to it and be fitting for, for Vader. Right. Um, so uh, I did not have to sandwich anything here. I just, but I had to get uh, larger wood screws than I'm normally using. I had to get these four-inch buggers so I could really pull it down there, and then pre-drill the holes with a, a drill bit about half the size of the screw, so that the screw has enough wood to really tap into and uh, and and hold itself in with a friction hold. You don't have to glue anything. Uh, once it's in, it's in. I mean, you're just putting the stand up and hanging something on here. You're not uh, messing around with it and loosening it up. So it's. I've had some of these other stands now for a few years that I've made not one problem. Um, so the same thing I did down here. Um, uh, Pre-drilled um, the hole through the disc in the center as best I could. Got this one a little bit straighter, so it, it, it turned out better. Um, and uh, tried a little bit of a countersink to get that screw a little bit flatter um, because I'm going to eventually put the felt underneath it there and I don't need the screw making it like feel like it's teetering because there's a bump in the middle. So once the felt, once the felt gets on there, that'll, that'll even all that out. Um, and just uh, basically held them by hand and carefully uh, used my uh, power drill with the Phillips screw end on it to kind of run them home. And very slowly um, and uh, controlled, don't jam them on in there. You want to bring them in until they stop and just slowly set them in. Because, um, uh, you, again, you can strip the, uh, the screw head ends, which I've done before. Uh, you can strip the wood or break the wood or uh, screw the screw too far down in, and then you're screwed. Um, so, yeah, the, the, that, that's... That's really it. I mean, it, it's just you want to have a, a good wider, a good wide base. A wider base would work, but I also have to consider that if I'm putting helmets near each other, I don't want to be taking up a lot of shelf space. I mean, I could put this on a small shelf on a wall somewhere and not have to worry about um, if I needed to put a helmet up somewhere. I could, I could just real quick throw up a um, just a shelf on the wall somewhere as long as I've got the outward space uh, for the helmet. I could just 
put this little boy down. He doesn't have to be more than eight inches wide, maybe a foot deep. Um, so you can get a small little helmet stand up on the wall if you needed to. Um, and uh, plus it's just fun to do it for me. And it, it's, uh, I like the result of it. I like the kind of more organic look I get and feel from the wood material. And, and now they're surprisingly light and deceptive as far as like you wouldn't think that they would be nice and sturdy, but they are. Um, and the, the textured black spray paint is what I think kind of makes it a little bit better for me instead of just looking like uh, sprayed wood. And, you know, it gives me a more, like I get just a, an interesting uh, texture. Uh, that's the word I use again for it. Um, and yeah, it works pretty good. And I would think I will probably um, just keep them plain as well. What I was doing before for a family member that I had uh, done my um, uh, Ruby's Supreme Vader restoration, um, which is a link on my main YouTube page if you want to go look at those pictures. I did a custom stand like this and did a uh, custom Imperial symbol paint job um, just for that stand for him as a gift because it was specifically going to that helmet. Um, but in most cases, I'm just going to keep them usable for whoever I put on them by just painting them black. Um, I'm not really going to decorate them like I did that other fat one and then be stuck with it. Unless I just spray paint over it and just make it uh, universal somehow, which might still be an option. Uh, so yeah, here we are. Um, two different stand heights uh, and the basic manufacturing um, details about how to do them. Make yourself a good stand for under 10 bucks, and, um, um, and there you go. So uh, if you have anything uh, to add or questions or, or do things like this of your own, uh, it would be cool to see them. You always leave comments in the bottom, like and subscribe and all that stuff, and always be civil, and we'll talk to you later.